as things are starting to get interesting politically, Jackie, as everybody's ramping up their campaigns. Oh. Yep. We got the are we talking politics we're this We're talking morning? politics, and we're talking about a little spin on this. We have the AARP uh, campaign's Vice President John Hishta here. Uh, he is here from Alexandria, Virginia, in town for just a couple of days. And also, Anthony Carroll, he's an Iowan. You're from right here in River That's City. Right. That's right. Uh, AARP Iowa Advocacy Director. And we're here talking about a presidential accountability campaign involved with the AARP. That's right. It's called Take a Stand. Which is what you have on right Which is right what there. I have on right here. And it's all about Social Security. Um, for, for everybody, the voters for the most part, understand that Social Security is going to run into some problems sooner rather than later right. in terms of solvency. And it's one of those issues that tends to not be discussed that much, particularly on the presidential level, because people don't want to get into the specifics. And so we have made a, a decision as an organization that we're going to hold the candidates accountable because we believe that if you're going to be leader of the free world, you ought to be able to tell the voters what you're going to do to solve Social Security. So what problems are we getting into with Social Security? So by 2034, if there are no changes to the program, everybody's benefits get cut up to $10,000 a year. That's a 25% cut across the board. So right off the bat, you got to deal with long-term Are we running out of money issues. or what's the issue? We there? are running out of okay. money because the baby boomer generation is coming in. It's a matter of demographics. Uh, more people are living older. You have a larger population that is retiring. On top of that, you also have issues that relate to the changes in the workforce. When, you know, when the program was designed in 1935, uh, there, were, there were one or households. It was mainly men who worked. Now you have working women in the house. Uh, uh, out there. We have to take that into consideration. A few other things that we need to update. So um, it's something that we're asking all the candidates to get into specifically and not just at a, you know, I like to say 80,000 foot level where they say, hey, Social Security is a good program. We all recognize it's a good program. What are you going to do to make sure it's around for future generations? Why are they so afraid to talk about it? Uh, because I think it's a difficult issue to uh, um, eventually walk through the process in terms of what you would do to make sure it's there for future generations. Um, as you know, on a lot of issues, candidates would rather just deal in sound bites and messages and stay on uh, 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 high level messages that frankly as a reformed political operative uh, um, I used to do the same thing with candidates and say you have to stick on one message and stick to it and not get into the issues and we're trying to force that conversation and so we have a website called 2016 take a stand out org where we're actually highlighting what the candidates say on the issue and putting up their specific proposals and plans. So every time something's mentioned by a candidate in, a, in any of the early states where we're focusing, specifically here in Iowa, mm -hmm. uh, we'll put it up on our website. So um, as Anthony and can to say, attest, Anthony, what are you doing here on a local front sure. with all of this? Well, we have 370,000 members in Iowa. Uh, we're doing events like uh, we were over in Cedar Rapids yesterday, uh, going to Davenport tomorrow. So really well-received events from our members. They like that we're focusing on Social Security and Social Security alone. They get it's an important issue. They, they, they get what we know statistically, for instance, of Iowans over six 65, 30% of Iowans over 60 65 depend on Social Security for all their income. All of it. And so it's not just, but it's not just a low income issue. For 56% of Iowans over the age of 65, it's over half their income. So they get it. It's an important issue. They're glad that we're working on it, and they want to be a part of it. They they like that uh, they can play a role. You know, as we all know in Iowa, we play an important role in the presidential caucus. So we're really kicking things off, and our members are our lifeblood. You know, we don't have a political action committee. We don't endorse candidates. We don't contribute to candidates. What we do have is active and engaged members. So that's what we're trying to do in Iowa and across the country. Now, does any one of the candidates seem to rise a little higher to the top than any of the other candidates? I would say, for the most part, they all have a baseline. A lot of them have a baseline plan of some sort, which uh, frankly surprised us that they came out as quickly as they did with a, with a series of proposals on what they would do. There are a few that have not issued any plans whatsoever yet. Um, that's and, surprising. Well, and that's it's a the, big fa that's a big voter base, and it's the uh, um, front runners on the Republican side. Believe it or not, it's uh, um, uh, Mr. Trump and Dr. Carson, and also uh, Ms. Fiorini. And so, you know, we're going to encourage them to come out with proposals specifically sooner rather than later. 
The more important element of this is, though, they need to keep talking about it, and they need to keep showing up in front of voters, you know, across the state and saying, this is what we're going to do, because as you just said, this is an important voting block, and mm -hmm. they're going to show up. They're going to be part of this caucus process, and, and they ought to know where these candidates stand. And so part of our effort is on a grassroots level to make sure we show up at the candidate events and we have our volunteers asking questions. We're making volunteer phone calls across the state right now. We have a volunteer phone bank set up in parts of the state where we're actually having members who are very engaged in this and enthusiastic about it calling other members mm -hmm. and saying, look, this is an issue that we all need to care about and we need to push the candidates on. And so, Can you see any of the candidates uh, finally realizing that you guys are for real, saying we better pay attention to this? Yeah, um, I think that there are specific instances. There have been cases where um, we've had candidates say, hey, I got that question a couple of months earlier or you know, a few weeks earlier in another part of the state. So it's starting to pop up. But like any campaign, you got to keep at it. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's not rocket science. It's just a, you know, it's a continuing process where you continue to force the No, we're going to keep at it. What, where are you guys going to be today? Uh, so today we're having some meetings in, in Des Moines with some key leaders because we're talking to members. We're also, we know it's important to talk to uh, campaigns and the people around them. So there's opportunity in Iowa, a lot of political operatives are running around. So we're engaging them um, today. And tomorrow we'll be talking to, I have another great meeting over in Davenport with members and some other key, again, political leaders in Davenport. Too. Now, is this anything that's open to the public, or is this? Uh, our well, actually, we're focusing on our members uh, for the for the big event. So, but uh, we're we're having other opportunities to engage in the, the public. Uh, as as John mentioned, we're showing up at candidate events, other open forums where you, you'll see our our volunteers in red shirt asking the question. We've been doing that. You know, we were at every soapbox uh, uh, meeting in the uh, state fair, and that's continued on. As John and we've really seen that progress, but um, it takes work that our volunteers are really leading the way. And on the phone calls, it's interesting to see our volunteers like doing it. I know that maybe sounds interesting to hear, but our v volunteers like that peer-to-peer -peer communications, feeling like they are part of the process and hearing from their fellow members in our state. So they've enjoyed that. All right. Well, John, thank you for uh, taking time yeah, to come over and visit us. Thank you so much for having we us. We appreciate it. Have a safe trip here today and tomorrow. And, and thank you. Take a stand if you want to go to the website to learn more. Awesome. Perfect.